Asked the Prime Minister how much McKinsey got. He said, well, it was all for the middle class. <laughs> he's always had difficulty defining what the middle class is. Now we know his definition. It's his friends who make $1,500 an hour as high-priced consultants for his government over at McKenzie, where his personal friend Dominic Barton was the boss. We now know that he spent $15 billion plus per year on high-priced consultants while Canadians are eating at food banks, living in homeless shelters, and house prices have more than doubled. Again, how much did his government give Mackenzie? How much? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, while Mr. Uh, well, the Leader of the Opposition snickers at the middle class, we will stay focused on supporting them. That's exactly what we did by bringing forward uh, supports for uh, rental, uh, rental uh, low-income renters, uh, supports uh, for families to send their kids uh, to the dentist. These are things that the Conservative Party voted against, just as they stood against the Canada Child Benefit, just as they stood against uh, help for seniors, just as they continue to stand against investments that have Canadian Canadians' backs before the pandemic, through the pandemic, and since the pandemic, we will continue to be there for Canadians. Here, here. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. After eight years of this Prime Minister, mortgage payments have doubled up to $7,000 per month for an average house in Toronto. Rent prices have doubled up to $2,500 a month for an average place in Toronto. The number of people eating at food banks has gone up to 1.5 million, and crime is up 32 percent. So we wonder where all this half trillion dollars of inflationary debt actually went. Now we know. Liberal friends got the money. So I'm going to ask a third time the well-connected insiders at McKinsey. How much did the Prime Minister give them? How much? The right honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, over the past number of years, we've invested in supporting Canadians from coast to coast to coast to lift families out of poverty, uh, to help seniors make ends meet, uh, to invest in low-income renters, to help uh, people access dental care for their kids, uh, to deliver the kinds of things that have made not just Canadians better off, but our whole economy uh, work better. We're going to continue to step up in investing in Canadians while uh, Conservatives continue to push cuts and austerity. Uh, and uh, not being there for Canadians. We know that investing in Canadians is the best way to build a better future. Right. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Prime Minister says that Canadians have never had it so good as they face 40-year highs in inflation, as food prices are up 12 per cent year over year after he brought in a carbon tax on our farmers, as the cost of housing has more than doubled, as students are actually living in homeless shelter. We know why, though. He's so out of touch with these people after eight years, because the people he surrounds himself with, like the high-priced consultants at McKinsey, are doing better than ever. So I'd like to ask him again. This company did money, did work of little or no value, according to his own public servants. How much did Canadians have to pay for that? The right honourable prime minister. Mr. Speaker, on the contrary, Canadians are struggling right now with high inflation caused by global crises, with interest rates, uh, with disruptions in the global supply chains, and that's why we've stepped up to support Canadians. Despite Conservative politicians voting against it, we've been able to keep investing in Canadians while maintaining the best balance sheet in the G7. We have the lowest debt-to-GDP ratio, the lowest deficit of all our G7 partners, and we've put that to work to support the Canadians who need it most. We will continue to be there for the middle class and people working hard to join it. Very the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Well, he finally got him to admit that Canadians are suffering, and it's after eight years of this Prime Minister. After eight years of this Prime Minister, we have 40-year highs in inflation. We have 32 percent increase in crime. We have the TTC transit system in downtown Toronto overtaken by crime. We have more people eating at food banks and living at homeless shelters after eight years of this Prime Minister. But not everybody is doing badly. His friends at McKinsey are rolling in cash. First they said it was $50 million. Now the government says it's over $100 million. We want to know the real number. Will the Prime Minister finally answer the question, how much did he give McKinsey? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker. Everyone in this 
this House, from conversations with constituents, with conversations with people right across the country, know well that Canadians are facing tough times. What the difference is between the Conservative leader and myself is, instead of proposing real solutions, instead of uh, telling Canadians how they're going to help them and invest them, the Conservative leader stands up, crosses his arms, throws up his hands and says, everything is broken. Well, that's not what Canadians are living through, Mr. Speaker. Canadians stick up for each other. We're there for each other. We support each other through the tough times. That's exactly what we've been doing through this pandemic, through these past years. That's what we will continue to do, no matter how much. How much. Member from Calgary, Forest Lawn. Speaker, after eight years of liberal mismanagement, the only people getting help and ahead are the Prime Minister who gets to lavish in $6,000 a night hotel rooms, his buddies over at McKinsey, and the Wee Charity who gets hundreds of millions of dollars worth of contracts, racists like Leif Maruth who gets hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of contracts, prisoners and dead people who get free Serb checks. It's never been so good for those people, but Canadians have never had it so bad. And recently, Canadians were just uppercut with another interest rate hike because of out-of-control Liberal spending. When will the Prime Minister stop rewarding his Liberal cronies and actually start helping struggling Canadians? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, let's talk for a minute about what the Conservatives would do to Canadians and the Canadian economy. The Conservatives are proposing to eviscerate our essential EI system. The Conservatives would endanger seniors' pension and the CPP. The Conservatives would make pollution free again. The Conservatives would deny Canadian families climate incentive checks. Mr. Speaker, those are all Conservative policies and they would all hurt Canadians in their pocket. That's right. The Honourable Member for Kelowna Lake Country. Well, Mr. Speaker, after eight years of this Prime Minister, Canadians have never found it so hard just to keep a roof over their heads. Rent increases have gone up at a record pace. Mr. Speaker, if the Conservatives really believed in supporting those Canadians who are having the hardest time paying their rent, they should have supported our plan to give those people $500 to help. Well, Mr. Speaker, rental inflation is up 12 per cent. Food inflation is up more than 11 per cent. Any of these government's programs will just get evaporated. We know that the former governor of the Bank of Canada said that Canada's inflation was homegrown. And the current governor said that inflation is as high as it is because of all of this spending that these Liberals have done, all of the extra spending. So after eight years, when will the Liberals finally get their inflation spending under control. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. You know, Mr. Speaker, the Conservatives continue to talk down the Canadian economy. That is reckless and that is irresponsible. We know Canadians need support and that is why we have a plan which is compassionate, but it is also fiscally responsible, Mr. Speaker. That is why just hours after we tabled the fall economic statement, Moody's reaffirmed our AAA credit rating. Mm -hmm. Canada has the lowest deficit in the G7, the lowest debt to GDP ratio, and in 2022, Canada had the strongest economic growth. Another liberal patronage scandal. Not content with gifting lucrative government contracts to hateful anti-Semites, now the Minister of Diversity, member for York Simcoe, handed $93,000 to a staffer's sister for public relations advice. Mr. Speaker, it's not difficult to realize that handling over taxpayers' dollars to your staff's family is a bad idea. Yet here we are again. Mr. Speaker, will the minister do the only responsible and dignified action and pay back the money? Yeah. Unfortunate but not surprising that the minister won't make it right after serving under this prime minister who has twice himself been found guilty of breaking Canada's ethics laws. These liberals exist solely for the purpose to hold on to power. They divide Canadians, pit neighbour against neighbour and line the pockets of liberal insiders while they're at it. So will the prime minister today ask for this minister's resignation. The Honourable Government House Leader. No. 